Okay, Pure Rock 105.5 KNAC, and I am joined in studio now by uh, two members of Gorky Park who uh, just finished up a night at FM station, Alex and Sasha. Now, are yeah, you right, big right. Sasha or oh, yeah, little yeah, Sasha? Big Sasha, <laughs> tall, tall one. Tall Sasha. Yeah, we got two Sashas in the band, so it's, actually it's a pretty, pretty popular name in our country. So like John or Bob in America, you know. Right. If somebody if somebody got some difficult with our names, you we, you, you can call us Bob and John, big big Bob or <laughs> and small John or something like that. So we've got uh, Sasha and Alex from Gorky Park, and uh, we're going to talk about a lot of different things. We got a lot a lot of area to cover in the next forty five minutes or so. Want you to join us four three seven KNAC seven one four five three four KNAC if you have any questions. The world news this past week has been focused on the Soviet Union. Uh, a coup attempt by hardline communists lasted only three days with Boris Yeltsin standing firm and emerging from the crisis as sort of a freedom fighter to now share power with Mikhail Gorbachev and to continue reform in the Soviet Union. We've been barraged by the facts on TV and with perspectives from every point of view with the possible exception of one the rock and roll perspective and joining us today are the members of Gorky Park who are going to try and give us that perspective. Let's go back to the beginning and uh, growing up in the Soviet Union and we'll talk about the events of this past week but I want to give everybody sort of where you guys came from. Um, mm -hmm. Growing up in the Soviet Union, where, uh, we whereabouts were, were, did you guys grow up? I uh, grew up in, uh, in Moscow in a big city and uh, we were growing up at the time when rock and roll was completely forbidden in our country and we used to play in the um, in the clubs and being arrested one, once in a while for playing rock and roll illegally. Actually arrested and taken off to jail? Yeah, yeah actually, yeah. yeah. For a couple of days, not not for a long time, but just, you know, like we were kind of, um, we were bringing kind of disorder, you know, to mm. society. You know, for formal, formal musical backgrounds. What sort of formal musical backgrounds did you guys grow up with? Did you take music in school? and? Yeah, we all... We're studying since we were like seven years old. We're studying music in the um, music schools, yeah, and um, studying classical music mostly. Very yeah. traditional music, uh, yes, I would yeah, assume. Yeah. Yes, yes. Nothing. Uh, Tchaikovsky, uh, Prokofiev. <laughs> right now, pop music uh, is not something that would be taught in school. I would assume. No, not at all. No, it's just from uh, from black market. Yeah. We we used to have huge black market. I think they still got some right dogs. Black oh, market yeah, is yeah, huge. Black market is still and huge. you can buy. I mean, anything you want there, but it's very expensive. Right. Is the black market still as prevalent now that things are opening up? I mean, you can get rock and roll records now, right, in the Soviet Union? You can you can get rock and roll records, uh, but more for hard currency, I'd say. And uh, But uh, lots of records are getting sold for soft rubles as well. But the uh, black market is still big. But we hope that in the near future, uh, the normal market or... Uh, sell them <laughs> right the market. Yeah. I want to take you back and see if you can remember when you first heard rock and roll and when it first maybe touched you and oh, uh, it was a long time ago long and, time and, ago. and what was the process involved in that I mean when was it that you knew that was what you guys wanted to do I got some records from uh, my friends and uh, some tapes for uh, like a tape recorder and uh, there was Stones and Bills yeah. and Creedence Clearwater Revival and then, then Grand Funk Revival Grand Funk and Led Zeppelin and a bunch of bands like this. yeah and we were like eight nine years old and <laughs> yeah first time my friend came to my to my to my home and says you know here is a I got a tape he said right uh, the girls are great I said what kind of girls he said go ahead keep, just listen and I was listening and I didn't realize it was the Beatles you know. And uh, the, you know, sort of, I don't know why he, he says the girls, the girls but right. prob probably the voices. Right. Was looks like a little bit of girls' voices. Now yeah. these are obviously. Yeah. Uh, it was all in English, so yeah. it had to be the music that touched you. The music, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. Didn't no know any, music, any word, you know. And, and when we were trying to copy, you know, like to mumble something, we would, you know, mumble it in some kind of space language. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you guys have been here a while, so your English is, uh, is starting to starting to pick up, and you guys speak uh, very good English. Thank you. Uh, back to the music a little bit. Can you give us maybe a little? 
I know rock and roll has been sort of in the underground, but can you give us sort of a, an overview of the history of, of rock and roll music in, in Russia? Where did it, when did it sort of sneak in through the underground? Was there rock and roll in the 50s, for instance? Uh, there were more, in, in the 50s, there were more, more probably jazz, you know, but it, it sort of was turning into rock and roll. Uh, we even weren't born then, but then um, when we were maybe like 10 years old, um, there were there were some bands in Russia which were playing um, rock and roll, but that was a little bit like state control type of rock and roll. You know, they were definitely um, very much limited, and they were basically more copying um, some Western bands. You know, more like Beatles and others. Yeah. Let's yeah. talk a little bit about the state controlled rock and roll as opposed to uh, the wild clubs. Right? Is that is that the proper term? The uh, wild yeah. club scene, w wild, yeah. yeah, oh yeah, which yeah. you guys wild played in the yeah. wild club scene, right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now the state controlled rock and roll, quote rock and roll, was it really rock and roll or was it more pop oriented? This was more actually pop oriented. We used to, we all used to play once in a while, you know, because we were professional musicians in a huge, huge bands. We were playing in the biggest bands in our country, and we were playing stadiums and arenas. But once in a while, we had to leave those bands, you know, because we were just sick of playing that kind of music. And style-wise, what kind of music was that that you were playing? It, it was all kinds of. Uh, it was from uh, jazz, jazz rock, to rock and roll, and to heavy music. But every time when you had, when you wanted to to go really wild, you know, on the stage. You were really, really limited and controlled, and they were cutting your balls, you know, completely. You know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, in <laughs> other words, anything that got people motivated was... Definitely, yeah. Right. We were playing in, in, the, in the band once, and um, it was a state-controlled band, and we were playing big arena on the south, and people started breaking the seats, you know, and we were completely forbidden after, after that, you know. And well, actually, I, I'm really appreciative of that time, you know, because it was a great time to learn different kinds of type of music we've been playing different different styles you know and stuff like that and now it's sort of easy to play anything whatever you want okay you know? so you did get something out of that even right. professional wise yeah right, yeah right okay yeah, yeah. now the wild club scene what was that all about sort of like underground clubs i would assume oh yeah that yeah, was kind of sort of like like very much like your clubs you know and um we just couldn't play big big places were completely forbidden and um we we were in a black list of the bands you know which couldn't play forbidden right? forbidden yeah, yeah completely forbidden you know we couldn't appear and play anywhere we we, we couldn't tour so we were playing in those clubs and sometimes it it went you know was working very well but sometimes you know somebody would come and just close the club or we would just be taken you know to police station you know spend there a couple of days <laughs> they actually put you in jail for a couple of days it's oh, just yeah. yeah police station couple of days yeah luck there uh, there until they would find out uh, why we were playing there and you know what kind of money we would get for that you know because we had to make our living by playing there yeah right. now we're really happy it's all in the past <laughs> in the past so right um back to the 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 state approved music that you were playing it's, it's my understanding that you had to have your set list approved by the by the state oh yeah yeah every 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 single song had to be approved you know it's like yeah lyrics and everything lyrics, they went over the everything. lyrics and everything oh, yeah. was under control yeah, yeah. everything everything they didn't like very much distorted guitar you know which we used. yeah long hair yeah, long hair yeah. uh, you, you had to cut it you know or to hide it you know behind your collar yeah. and I'm telling you more those guys they are more uh, communists more you know so see what's happening with them right now so and we'll talk about that what, yeah, in okay. a little bit all right um <clears throat> stas naman is that is that the pr correct pronunciation of the gentleman's yeah, right, right. name yeah right. He, yeah he is the one that sort of helps you guys uh, get started or yeah you want to talk a little bit about that yes yeah, Stas uh, used to be a big man he has actually had also state control kind of band a big band and he was uh, the big empresario even during the hard times um, but he still was more or left kind of guy thinking you know and um, he always liked of course good music and uh, uh, when we got together, he, he was our sponsor, you know, and he was the one who was helping us, you know, to um, to get on our feet, you know, because yeah, even uh, when the Paris Strikers started, yeah, to get to get together this kind of band and to get this band on on a, its feet was kind of difficult, you know. We were still a little bit too wild for the society. You know? Right mm -hmm. now, Stas, I 
as I've read, helped you come to America, basically, right? Yes, yes, yes. Because yeah. Stas, Stas had these 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 connections, and uh, we we attracted the interest. And Stas made the official site, you know, working. Yeah. So, the arrangements were made, and you got on the plane, and you came to America. Yes, right. Yes. And we did first our demo here, and then we came back home, and uh, in a few months we. We go back to America again, and, and we record, record our first album, album. Yeah. and Moscow Peace Festival, and whole things like that. Okay, yeah, yeah. the first time you sat down here in the United States, you remember yeah. your first impressions of what you what yeah, you saw? Yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, yeah, I remember it very clearly. You know, it was in New York, right? And it was, I mean, smashed. You know, the uh, how to say this phone? Uh, not, not not phone. The papers, papers uh, place. How to call this place? The guys selling some papers and stuff. The like newsstands. The little house, little little, you know. Yeah, like kiosk. Yeah, yeah. kiosk right. or something. Yeah. Okay. I was smashed it completely because I was looking around. You know, wow, kiosk New York is a wild down, city, right? And, and you it ran was right into down it. that place. You know, by my head or something. That was first. Ah, expression. he he, he stumbled on it. Stumbled. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 That was so first you, expression. You f you fell right into it then. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. Um, and and your your impression of the the lifestyle here when you first came over. We actually adopted pretty pretty quick because we grew up in a wild city and it was Mo Moscow, right. and with a pretty fast rhythm of life. No, and uh, and uh, we we adapted to New York pretty fast, but of course we were crushed by the uh, uh, skyscrapers, you know. And yeah. yeah, just New York pretty close. Very to very impressed to, to Moscow. It's a big city, huge energy and stuff yeah, like big, that. Big energy, big energy, and so you pretty similar. You came over. You recorded the album. Yes. And then you went back to Russia. Uh, we uh, we recorded the album. We, we 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 went back and played big concert with the Bon Jovi, Motley Crue, all the Scorpions, all those bands in Moscow. Then we came back here, uh, and um, obviously we were supposed to go and open for Bon Jovi, but our management went down. The first management they got bankrupt, and we lost all kinds of tours. And we did. So you got your first tape, taste of capitalism, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So we went around the United States playing uh, clubs, and um, then we got some success in Europe. And we went and we played there already arenas, you know, like headline tour in Scandinavia. Now you came over uh, to record the album, and then you went back for the Moscow Peace Festival. What, 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 what? How did you feel about that after all the oppression that you'd you'd faced growing up uh, musically? What, what were your impressions of that? I know it's really, it's really difficult to explain. Oh, it, it we, it I was, was almost crying really when I, when I came on the stage, and almost hundred thousand people, you know, in the same place, the same time, and it was just exciting. I don't know. I was so. I don't know. We couldn't believe, basically. Yeah. It was kind of like a rock and roll revolution, you know, at that time. And a lot of people point to that event as as one of the things that really helped open the the doors politically yeah. in that country. Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah. That time, it was a huge, huge step. Uh, it was probably more important for kids than for some politicians, but still, it did a lot as for rock and roll as for politics as well. You know. I noticed on the liner notes of your first album, um, right at the top of the list, special thanks to Mikhail Gorbachev for making it possible to bring our music to the world. Mm -hmm. Definitely, Gorby did a lot, you know, for opening up. And um, if if he wouldn't do that first step, the, now lots of people, you know, un unsatisfied with uh, what he did in the past few years. Cause I think he was sl too slow, and um, we were a little bit angry too. You know, and everybody would want probably more radical kind of steps. But at that time, it was, you know, he did the greatest thing probably, and uh, made everything is possible. You know, at least he opened lots of doors for everybody else. And now, the other people trying to make it faster, but he was a great. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about your. We've we've talked a little bit about your early musical influences. What what are the bands that uh, really influenced you and 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 probably reflect what you're doing now more more than anything? What bands? Lots of bands, all kinds of bands. The first one was Bills, definitely, and it's still one of our favorite bands. Then Led Zeppelin, and such bands like Yes and. Uh, we used to listen to all kinds of music from Led Zeppelin to Earth Within Fire, you know. And yeah, yeah, Chick well, Corea and, and, and Herbie Hancock and yeah. 
all, all kinds of music. All right. Yeah. Well, one of the uh, cuts on your your first album uh, is a cover of the Who. Yeah. What sort of the um, what sort of an influence were they? My generation. I don't know. We, ju we, we just felt that this song felt, very yeah. close to us, you know. And uh, the lyrics is just uh, just, about just us. right there, you know, right, right, right about, about us, our yeah. people, yeah. Right, and that's the uh, cut that was put on the uh, "Make a Difference" uh, yes record. And uh, yeah. why don't we listen to that? And uh, all right, <laughs> that would and, be nice. And then we'll come back and we'll yeah. talk a little bit about uh, what went down this past week yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, what the future of Gorky Park is. Okay, okay. Thanks. This is Pure Rock Talk back on one hundred five point five KNAC.
Rock 105.5 KNAC Gorky Park and the cover of the Who tune My Generation. Uh, in studio with us is Alex and Sasha, Big Sasha. Yeah, how are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're talking about uh, basically uh, a lot of different things, music and politics and the whole shot. Uh, you guys live here now, right? Right. We, yeah, we have... What uh, is your status? Our basically? status is actually multi-entry visa, you know, here. We're still uh, citizens of our country, uh, but to make it comfortable for our management, for us, our management worked out for us that kind of visa that we can come and live anytime we want. And yeah. you have no problem going back? No, 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 no problem until uh, l uh, last week, let's say, when it started <laughs> everything. When it started, yeah, it was really surprised us. When it hit the fan, huh? Yeah, yes. oh yeah. That, um... You still have family over there too. Yes, we have families. Our parents. Now you obviously have have settled settled in here pretty well. What do you miss about the Soviet Union at this point? I mean, obviously we've talked about a lot of the negative things, but I mean, growing up there, there's got to be things you do miss besides your family and friends. We, which maybe is obvious. a little bit wildness, you know, of it, of of the life there, and of uh, our friends, you know, yeah. our our buddies, you know, school buddies, they're all there, you know. We, we just want to see them once in a while. Yeah. Any plans of any of you becoming citizens? Has there any thought been given to that? Uh, United States. Yeah. I would be great, you know, because uh, it just would be great opportunity to um, to belong here and there, you know. Yeah. And, but it's not uh, as easy, you know, as somebody can think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, let's talk about the past week's events. First of all, uh, were you surprised at what happened? Uh, I, I, I wouldn't call it a surprise. I would, I'd I say we, yeah, we were shocked. We got quite shocked. a few gray hair. I say. Uh, yeah, you know. And you were telling me off, off the air that you basically lived in front of the TV set. Oh, yeah. It was even, even hard to see, you know, the tanks on the streets of our city. We've been driving there, uh, and actually we know the city pretty well. I yeah, mean, our hometown and all yeah, some hometown tanks and on the street. The tanks on the street. It was looking weird, you know. It was it was looking awful. I mean, it was really shocked me. I mean, all of us. Were you in contact uh, with any of your family or friends during this period, or was was it hard to get get through over there? Oh, immediately we called immediately, and uh, I said the first moment, you know, uh, when it started, like few two hours. Uh, we called our friends, and somebody did know. Some of them did know. What's happening? We don't know. Say, so, oh, we know more than you know, because we're yeah, watching know, because CNN. The coup, they stopped everything. They they like uh, blockade. TV didn't work. Radio didn't work. Radio stations, and nobody knows what's 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 happening in the yeah. damn home. Except the tanks, but they could think they might go in for some kind of parade. It isn't that right. isn't that kind of weird to to know that yeah. you knew about it more than yeah it before is. they did? It is weird. Yeah. It was scary. It was because we scary, we yeah. wanted to shout very loud that everybody would hear in our country. Get up, get up, doing something. Kind yeah. of reminiscent of the old days to some degree. <sighs> there was yeah. no such a days uh, even when we used to live there because it was you know pure military invasion. You know, in um, there, I didn't see anything like that. So while this was coming down. What kind of concerns were going through your minds? What, did you see all of it going away? We, we taped everything, you know, we lived and slept and eat, you know, ate by the TV all those days. And we taped every single moment on video. And um, finally we realized that it's not going back. And uh, uh, in a way, we were actually glad that uh, it's happened because it showed that... Uh, People are not the same people anymore there. They're yeah. not puppets anymore, and uh, they got a guts, you know, to go against the tanks with a Molotov cocktail. And uh, people have balls now, and yeah. that's great. I want to th say thanks to CNN very much, <laughs> because, because they help us a lot. I mean, yeah. see, we, uh, we was knows more than our, our friends in Russia. Right, yeah. isn't it great That's job amazing, from CNN? Yeah. See, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's great. Yeah, yeah. and the the one one also great thing, you know, we um, uh, we, when we were watching the TV and uh, we really uh, really want to say thanks, you know, to um, all American people and to Mr. Bush, you know, because the reaction was, uh, you know, we, we we never knew what can happen, what could happen, because uh, everybody can. Uh, Somebody can accept, you know, the new new government or whatever those people who came, but um, the reaction was uh, their attitude was, you know, hard and uh, 
they really stood up for democracy and um, didn't accept the this coup of eight. You know how it right. called. Yeah. yeah, it's great. Hunter. Any any thoughts as to why you th think this happened? Was it because possibly that uh, the economic policies were not working? The the way it happened because I think those those guys they were waiting for a long long time. They were just. Um, they really missed the old days, you know, when they could do anything, you know, anything they wanted. There was no limit to to their will, I would say, and possibilities. And uh, they were losing day by day, day by day, all these six years. And uh, they just decided to restore those days. And um, they wait for the right moment. And see, they did it the day before uh, the treaty was signed. And... Uh, that would would be really something, you know, and they would lose a lot, but now they lost everything. <laughs> so it was a it was a serious mi miscalculation on their part, right? A huge miscalculation, right? Yeah. And they they were doing it completely, you know, unprofessionally, I would say, with all these stunts and. Yeah. You mentioned CNN uh, in years go gone by. Uh, whenever something like this went down in the Soviet Union obviously the Western world didn't know a thing about what was going on and a lot of people give a lot of credit besides yourself to CNN as far as getting the word out to the world mm -hmm. as to what was going on as opposed to the way it used to be yes yes so where do you see the Soviet Union going from here? Obviously, uh, in in this five day period, it's been kind of a roller coaster for you. You've you've seen the yeah. worst uh, yeah. thing happen, and then I think now it sort of turned into a good thing. I think now a very coaster, good thing. That roller coaster going up, just yeah, yeah. up and very fast. It's going to be like that. Uh, With no way, no way back. No way back. First of all, and uh, it, it gave great opportunity to um, to get rid of. You know all these hard guys, and uh, it, I think there is no way back, just <laughs> And I think I think I want to tell uh, uh, some things to to people who's who's playing rock and roll. I think it would be pretty soon we we would go all of us. I mean, who's playing rock and roll music? We would go there and we would tour there, and it, it would be no problem. I mean, just you know, so just very welcome. Musically, things are going to open up there. Too. Musically. Polit politically, whatever. Economically, economically, yeah. e economy everything. is still, you know, pretty much down. Yeah. You know, and um, it's actually basically it's economical disaster. But you know what was happening uh, last couple of years? Um, uh, these hardliners they used to um, control lots of things still, and uh, they used to do such a things like uh, stopping um, the trains and trucks with the food and dump all food, you know, to the ground. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, uh, everybody was thinking, where is the food? Because when we lived there, the food was there. You know, there was no right. much of freedom, but food was still there. But freedom came and food disappeared. How come? People still were working. And there was huge, huge... Um, they used to do huge operations, and they dumped, like, you know, for a billion dollars, you know... Yeah, we saw on TV, food, like, you know. tons, tons of sausage and stuff like that. They, there was... Uh, meat, anything. Meat, everything. Just they, dumped. They, just, just dumped, dumped. Yeah, yeah. It was done dumped. on purpose to make people angry. Yeah. You know, and now everyone, everyone is know who, who did this, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. So. And we hope that uh, now uh, it's over, and it, it, at least um, they won't dump the food there and try to fix the economically you know what part do you think uh, boris yeltsin's going to play in all of this he obviously came out of this as sort of the hero of the of the week and uh, now he's going to share some of the uh, the power with mikhail gorbachev he's going to share if not get more he has probably more power than gorbachev now and he's the guy who was brought up by people he has nothing to do with the government he has nothing to do with the uh, career, you know, yeah. like going through this all comedies and everything. He was brought up by people from the ground, yeah. and uh, I think he might be a new leader, you know, soon. Yeah, we still have lots of respect for Gorby, but we think um, Yeltsin is very progressive kind of a guy, and he just, you know, new step. And as progressive as Gorbachev was, uh, he still had ties with the old world uh, until yesterday, actually. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, a lot of people think that he would have moved reform on a, a lot quicker had yeah. he not been tied to those old, oh, old, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, old party ways. ties were 
you know, too tight, I would I say. So you see him him loosening up a little bit more too. Uh, now that the, the the party ties are are pretty much gone and and the, the hard liners are out of out of the picture. That was great step when he quit with the communist party because that was one really ridiculous thing you know this whole party in our country it was like huge huge mafia you know the biggest mafia in the world probably mm -hmm. <laughs> controlling this huge country and um, this was quite a step it's over and so what is the future of communism in the Soviet Union is it gone oh I think it's gone I, yeah I, I think it, it's it, gone. it didn't it's have future just... before because nobody believed really in communism the people there. didn't yeah. people didn't believe you know there were just few you know this this mafia you know who was promoting this a lot on tv and they yeah. used to promote it for 70 years but people didn't believe uh, that and see it came I, to the idea end. idea of com communism right it's sort of like uh derived from uh, it's all ends, utopia, yeah. ends community or something like that that's idea right but human beings they are not ants you know how you yeah. could put these whole things together you know it just i mean Let's go back a little bit to the music. Uh, at this point, what do you see? Do you see more Ru Russian bands coming out of there now that uh, we hope? Yeah, we hope, yeah. There, there are many bands, and we hope some of them would 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 come out and uh, would would become popular. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, really, in reality, you guys are about the only major band that's 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 come out of there. Why do you think that is? Maybe because we have worked hard. Yeah. <laughs> I could be. <laughs> but I think we work harder than anybody else from, yes. from our country. That's why we're here. Yeah. First, I mean. So, when when the there are lots of bands and lots of good musicians, guys. When they will learn how to work hard, they will be here. Yeah. Are you in fun. contact with these musicians? Of course. Yeah. 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 We always call and they call us and we talk how how yeah, actually going. a couple of guys was on. Uh, FM station. Yeah, oh. a couple of guys we came to them, FM yeah. station to see the show. Just yeah. visiting. Just yeah. visiting. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I want to go back a little bit. We talked about the political changes, and we talked a little bit about the economy. Do you see the economy changing over there? That seems to be the big problem right now. Huge problem. Yeah, I, th I think at this time it's still a big problem. It's still a big problem, but it's got to change. They got to trade more, you know. And uh, basically, we're friends with everybody, you know, country which we wanted to be. You know, when I was a kid, I didn't understand all those politics. We didn't understand, you know. We wanted mm -hmm. always to be kids you want to play you know and we need, we need more politics of love than yeah, yeah. anything else like that I, I want to go back again you mentioned growing up um, what was your perception in gr in growing up of the United States what was was the perception you were given I know there was certain amount of propaganda fed to you just as us growing up we were fed certain propaganda yeah. as to the quote evil empire and all of that what what was your perception as as kids growing up we were what the united states was yeah we were getting lots of propaganda you know that uh, that black people are very discriminated that what was we mostly were getting uh, on the tv that it's a very militaristic kind of state in everything and uh, but uh, basically hmm. when we listened rock and roll and when the uh, first time we listened to rock and roll and we uh, realized that this came from the United States, we thought, no, I don't think those people are really so bad, you know, because they play this great music. It can't be so bad. You know? kinda, and it, finally, the, the stereotype was broken. It's, you know? it's, it's yeah. interesting. Um, it, a couple things are interesting. First of all, uh, we were perceived as, as very militaristic. Yes, yes. Yeah, See, yeah. Now, that was the perception that we were given. Yeah, of the Soviet yeah. Union yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that strikes me funny is the the whole racism thing, which in reality is a problem here. But they they really played that up, right? Yes, yes. Of mm -hmm. course, they uh, the um, dark things were trying to make darker, you know, and uh, like increase. Yeah. Right. But then you heard black music. Oof, yeah. As part of the oh, rock yeah. and roll scene, yes, and right. you knew that that. Yeah, we knew it, it. It's all. I'm. I'm sorry, but it's all bullshit. You know, <laughs> I'm really sorry about this word, but this is exactly exactly word for this situation. So, and I used to be in army. I mean, in um, uh, Soviet Air Force about three years. I used to be a pilot, a mixed mix pilot, and it was a military college actually. And I was playing rock and roll all my life, even in army, right? And. Uh, Yes. And what, he was kicked out from the college by playing rock and roll and, and growing your <laughs> Actually, hair yeah. and growing your hair long. Yeah, but you know, no, <laughs> not about the hair, right. but it was 
I mean, the propaganda was huge and powerful at that time, really. And my commander, they came. We we start rehearsal right in some some small room with my my friends. It was Sunday, I remember, and uh, my commanders came to that room. It was pretty loud because Led Zeppelin. You couldn't play Led Zeppelin, no, no. you know, in the small song, the small song, yeah. right? Impossible. And we're playing something like that, and uh, they came and says, "What are you guys playing?" I said, "Well, this is band called Led Zeppelin. Where are they from?" They said, "I said, well." I think they're from England, but they live in America. I don't know really, but right. they're f somewhere from, the from West, there. Yeah. yeah, from the West. And he said, all right, man, you should stop it, all right? I said, why? You don't ask why, you just stop it, all right? I said, all right. And he left. We start playing again. He came to our room again and says, all right, I told you. I told you to stop it, right? I said, well, I couldn't do, I couldn't do this, man, because, you know, I like it. He said, well, you go, you got to go to the jail for... For first time for three days, all right? That's all right with you? I said, all right, Army no problem, jail, yeah. because commander says I should, you know. Let me quote from, the, was, let, yeah. let me quote from the, the album liner notes again. Rock and roll is our religion, what we believe in and what our souls live on. Being patient and open-hearted brings back joy to the spirit and dispels the bitterness and the pain. That's the great happiness and the joy of believers in the self and in rock and roll yeah yeah that's that's what you gotta do that's what we were, were yeah. thinking about uh before perestroika actually and we yeah, put yeah. this words right on the record because it was really like this yeah, yeah. i mean it, it, the rock and roll brings brings joy you know and it wipes out all, all bitterness you know w whatever you get from from the life finally you know the, let's play another tune <laughs> this is the big hit the bang Bang, yeah, bang, bang, <laughs> tell me say, about bang. Da, 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 da. Tell me about bang. Bang. No, first question from I mean, many people ask us, what does it mean? What are you guys singing there? You know, bang, bang, say what? <laughs> say, ta, 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 do, 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 or something like that. So I'm gonna tell to everybody who's listening right now, bang, bang, say da, 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 da means say yes, 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 yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, pure rock, 105.5 okay. KNAC. <laughs>
Pure Rock 105.5 KNAC Gorky Park and uh, the big hit off of that particular disc, uh, Bang. Say da 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 da. Yeah. Yes, say we're yes, here yes, with yes. Uh, Alex and uh, Big Sasha and we're wrapping things up here. Um, Want to talk a little bit. We've talked. It's obvious that you guys are happy about being here in the United yes, States. Yes, yeah, we are. Yeah. It, it really is. What are the negative things you see here going on in the country? Uh, we can't find many negative things. But it's tough, I guess, when you come from a background such as yours, is to yeah. find a lot of negative. Yeah, yeah. they're just um, like we see lots, of, lots of homeless people. You know, like in, in in New York, we used to live in New York for a while, and so a lot of homeless people outside, and. Um, the show business actually is pretty tough, you know, and then yeah. we were screw screwed a little bit, you know, in the beginning. Uh, but we learned. You, you found know. out yeah, about yeah, what yeah, capitalism yeah. is no, all now about, we're people right? with a, with a huge experience in show yeah, yeah, business. Yeah. Yeah. Huge, yeah. yeah. But, you know, you, you, but you know that's think. no different than any other American band coming up. They all learn that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Basically, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. What about the music censorship issue that's been at the forefront of especially music over the past couple years? Uh, the, the idea of labels and the idea of uh, uh, banning records uh, and, and not allowing kids to buy certain records and so on any thoughts on that we don't think it's really right you know and we don't like any kind of censorship you know because when censorship goes too far you can get results like in our country you know and you never know when it goes too far so it's yeah. a pretty dangerous thing we, we think and um, we think the United States is the most free country in, in the world and uh, I don't think it's a place for censorship at all you know, rock and roll has always been free, and it, it's a reflection of people's thoughts about the freedom, you know. Mm -hmm. and right. So. Future of Gorky Park. What's happening with you guys? We're finishing our album right now. We're just a few weeks away from the mixing, you know, and finishing our album. And, and, we, and, and we, we think it's going to be a great album. What, what can we expect for those of us that know the, the first album? Is it going to be along the same lines, or what are, what are we looking at musically? Well, it's, it's good, going to be more energy type of More album. energy, more dancehall stuff, you know, and at the same time it's more powerful. And more stuff. powerful kind of music, yeah. yeah. And um, I hope, we hope people will like it. And the lineup. Uh, originally there were five members? Yeah, it's four, four members now, and... Um, uh, we feel more free on the stage now, more space. You know? Now it's yeah. the same four members. Uh, yes, yeah. yes, the same yeah. four as, members as originally. Yeah. Just we have right. more space to move now on the stage. You know? <laughs> 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 uh, You've got the rock and roll pose down now, huh? Yeah. Uh, and and you were telling me off here, nothing's planned for tours yet, but uh, keep an eye open. You guys are going to be around, right? Oh, definitely, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna play a few gigs more in, in Los Angeles and. Uh, um, we may maybe do a short European uh, tour, very short, you know, just to, to earn a little bit money. And then we're going to do probably lots of things in the United States. And we, what about what about going back to the homeland? We, we want to... Just for a while. Yeah, we want to talk to our management and uh, set up some big, big gig, you know, in, in, in Russia again. And mm -hmm. with a... Because you haven't been, you haven't played over there since the Moscow Peace Festival, right? right? Basically not. Jeez. Basically not. Yeah, basically not. We're traveling all over the world, but we want, we want to go and do something big again. Yeah. And maybe this time uh, you can headline. Whereas definitely the yeah. Moscow oh. Peace Festival. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Were, people are hungry there. They they. No, I think we, we, we would we would let this opportunity to somebody else, like you know, like our guests. Right. You know we. We, of course, we can be headliners there, but you know it would be nicer if somebody else would headline it. You know, make those those people really happy. Exactly. Yeah. Listen, I've been hogging the the whole show here, and we've got a, a listener or two that want to speak to you. You guys want to take a couple quick calls sure, before we go? Sure. Yeah. That would have be the headphones. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Good morning. Hello. Buzz is oh, wait a minute. So bad. There we go. Hello. Good morning. Who's this? Chrissy, how you doing? Great. Big Scorpions fan here. Oh, really? Oh, that's great. Great. Yeah. We're big, big, big bus with the um, Scorpions. And all. Yeah, they're great guys. In fact, that kind yeah. of brings me to a question I have for you. You had mentioned a little bit earlier about hard currency and soft rubles, and um, I get a lot of mail from Russia for the Scorps, and um, 
They tell me about this law called Chapter 8 where it's illegal for them to own U.S. currency. Can you tell me a little about that? What does that mean? For, uh, to own uh, Russian currency? No, to actually own U.S. currency is illegal for uh, people in Russia? Uh, used to be. Yeah, used to be forbidden, you know, because it was kind of breaking, you know. They, they thought it would break economy, you know. People would use dollars. It's not like that. Us. It's not like that anymore. No, not no, like that. Because like uh, all our friends uh, have dollars there, and they have now many stores w where you can buy for dollars. And really, so they can now obtain U.S. currency. Oh, well, sure. Yeah, no, it's yeah. no problem. Yeah. Oh, okay. well, that's really we worry it more about the ruble getting hard. You know, it's a little bit too soft. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chrissy. <coughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, gentlemen, I appreciate you coming in at this early hour, and uh, good luck to, to the band, and say hi to the rest of the band, and uh, okay. we'll I'll welcome. definitely be out at the next show, wherever it might be, and uh, well, thank you. We'll, we'll, say, we'll say hello out there. I'm going to leave you with a cut you guys asked, asked for. Tell me a little bit about this one. This is a song called Try to Find Me, and um, this song we wrote a long time ago when we... So a huge uh, article in newspaper about uh, teenage suicides uh, all around the world, and uh, that triggered us for writing this song. Yeah, we just—it's not the song about suicides, but I think this song kind of makes people feel warmer, you know, and brings them together, yeah, you know? warmer and closer yeah. to each other. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Oh, you're very Thank welcome. Thank you. Our Thank pleasure. you very much. Gorky Park on Pure Rock 105.5 KNAC.
Show Rock 105.5 KNAC Long Beach, Los Angeles. I'm going a little bit into your show. It's my, okay, man. my apologies. Don't worry, dude. That was very, very cool. If you yeah. had to go into anybody's show for any reason, I think that uh, uh, having Gorky Park on certainly was a pretty darn cool, cool thing. They're really nice guys. Great guys. Yeah. Great guys. And uh, I want to thank them once again for coming in. Uh, it's, it's early, and it's tough to get people to come in at that, this hour, and I really appreciate that. Yeah, but the, the, the unrest of the past week... Um, it was real timely, and, and the guys had an awful lot to say. They've got a lot of, uh, I think they're going to get an awful lot of new fans um, based on the way things have been in the past past week. Um, right. their, their gig, and they played at the FM station this past week. Um, I'm definitely going to make sure I go check them out. I've, I've always had an interest in the band, but it's a much more keen interest now based on what I've heard this morning on, on, on the Talkback show. Right. Very cool show, Mike. Like we talked about, uh, if I can take another minute here, like we talked about off the air with the guys uh in the United States, we kind of live in our own little cocoon, and until something like what went down this past week uh, does happen, we kind of separate ourselves from what's going on in the world, and when a, an event like this takes place, we're sort of forced into it because the media is there, and we are forced to learn about what's going on in other countries. Oh, and definitely. Yeah, I just really think that it's a, a good opportunity right now for people's minds to expand just a little bit and, and to open their eyes and ears and hearts to people uh, in situations that they might not normally have um, been exposed to, been open to. Um, you know, maybe it's just a personal thing for me, but I think it is it's that way for an awful lot of people. It's It's been a very, very uh, eye-opening experience this past week. I know a lot of my friends, a lot of people I know uh, have been very keenly interested in what's been going on in the Soviet Union and uh, that's going to continue and uh, uh, just the way things have gone is is a way happening deal. Well now the order of the day uh, is yes. is a major pure rock assault here. <laughs> yeah we're talking a major. major. Yeah, yeah. We, we'd be yeah. cranking. Yeah. Yeah. Not a problem. That's uh, that, that's kind of why I'm here Mike. I came in to uh, to well, basically, to clean up and kick some ass this morning. It's, it's, that's, the, that's my M.O. Well, let's do it. Sounds this is good. Pure Rock, 105.5 KNAC, Long Beach, Los Angeles. Yeah. Pure Rock, 105.5 KNAC. Some music from the MTV Video Music Awards. First, we heard uh, Queen, well, we heard Queen's Reich, Best I Can. And uh, Van Halen from OU812 AFU Naturally Wired and started it off with uh, Metallica from uh, Ride the Lightning. This is Pure Rock Talkback. Mike Stark with you until 9 o'clock. And surprise guest has arrived in the studio. If I can get their mic on. Hi, guys. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Gorky Park has returned. <laughs> How's it going, guys? Good. Great. 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 You have brought a world premiere to us here and we're gonna we're gonna play that in a little bit but i thought as long as as long as you guys were here we'll talk a little bit about what's come down since you were here last in your home country yeah. uh, of the soviet union and uh... you know it's like a daily ch daily thing that things change uh... since we talked last uh... the communist party has virtually been dismantled any thoughts on that which is really really <laughs> exciting <laughs> oh, we're really excited about that one because when when we used to live uh, there, like to to being grown up in our country, you know, we we could never think it ever would happen. You know, basically, it, it used to be like a uh, like a normal thing to exist for that party. It was huge mafia, you know, and we, we we never thought it they would come this day. You know, that. the um, also in the past couple of weeks, the uh, Soviet Union as a country has sort of lost ground in keeping. Um, keeping the Soviet Union as a as a total country, yes. um, and a lot of the independent uh, republics are, including the Baltic states, are uh, totally breaking away from it, their ties with Moscow. Uh, any feelings on that? I, I think it's up to people, you know, and uh, whatever people want is great. Because when people want something and it happens, then uh, the they have uh, like. Uh, great energy there, you know. Their feelings, they create great energy, and that g good background for new, f new things happening, you know. 
What about the concerns that have also come up because of all of these, the breaking up of the Soviet Union, the concerns with the nuclear weapons control? Um, there's nuclear weapons, obviously, all over the Soviet oh, Union. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, what about uh, the situation with these nuclear weapons getting into the hands of some of these independent republics? Is, is there a danger involved there? But I think it's a little bit dangerous in a way, yeah. But uh, I would hope that this time the, they have the uh, right guys in control of military, you know, and they can uh, centralize that and um, get uh, control over all those weapons. And they uh, also um, should keep their word on what they were promising to the United States and all. Yeah, and another thing. And the rest of the world. Yeah. Another thing, this weapon not in. Uh, uh, hands of communists anymore, you know, that's more exciting. I mean, the fact, the fact yeah, that those, the those people was really, really dangerous. I think so. Yeah. What about the fact that changes are happening so fast there? Uh, it sort of creates somewhat an unstable situation. Uh, do you have any concerns about that? You know, sooner or later, they had to happen anyway, you know, and it's better that it happens this way than it would be like, let's say, civil war. You know, we all were expecting for a while a civil war, especially when the tanks went on the streets. We thought, wow, that's real time. There's going to be lots of blood. But it's better than when it happens this peaceful way. And the people... Well, just it, it wasn't actually a peaceful way. Four, four or eight people were dying, died, so... But, you know... You, you just have to deal with this, uh, with these things, you know, it happens fast, but at least it happens, you know. <laughs> we're talking with Alex and uh, Sasha of Gorky Park, and we're going to play a new song of theirs in a couple of minutes. If you have a question for them, we can take a couple of calls, 437-KNAC and 714-534-KNAC. What about this uh, growing partnership between uh, Yeltsin and Gorby? What are, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I think that's about the time. <laughs> to happen, you know, as they used to to fight for a while in in, in the past. But now they started out as good friends. They right? started out as a good friends, but Yeltsin was a little more progressive than Gorby, and uh, you know, Gor Gorby had ties, you know, with the old guys. You know, they kind of pulled him back, and he was hard with the Yeltsin for a while. But see, it's fate, you know, it goes on, and it brought them together back. Have you been in uh, contact with people in the Soviet Union oh, yeah. since we yeah. last oh, yeah. talked? Well, well, every, every day. Yeah. What is the uh, what is uh, the feeling of the people that are there now? They're very very optimistic. You know, they're very cheered up, and uh, they know basically you now that there are you know lots of problems, hundreds of problems, uh, and uh, but they kind of don't look at the problems, but they look at the future and they just hope work, yeah. work everything out. Um, Last question, and we'll uh, then we'll play the talk a little bit about the record. Um, recently, this is sort of a cultural question. Recently, uh, there's been pictures on the TV and various things about uh, uh, citizens toppling statues and uh, purging libraries and taking, uh, basically trying to uh, sweep the past regime under the rug, so to speak. Uh, there are even there's even talk now of uh, burying Lenin, who has been on display for That's about the time, really, for sixty <laughs> years. Uh, do you think? Uh, also, they're talking about renaming Leningrad. I heard that. Or that's already happened. That's it's already, already happened. happened. Yeah. yeah, it happened. Uh, I think the day before yesterday, they named it uh, the back the the old way, Saint Petersburg. Saint Petersburg. Saint Petersburg. Petersburg yeah. Yeah. Do you think this is healthy? Uh, a, a healthy change that you basically just sort of forget about the last. 50 or 60 well, years? If, if you heard something about the Peter first, it, it's a uh, very, it was a pro progressive Russian Tsar on the, on the back, some, something like in the, uh, 300 years 300 ago. years ago, yeah. He was a very, very progressive guy and he, he built this city, he built this, you know, country like uh, from the beginning, everything from the beginning. He did a lot of changes in Russia and I think this is really, really good if this city will call it again, you know, by his name. You know, and the changes basically, uh, it's, it's, it's difficult, you know, to, of course, to forget about the, the, what happened in the last 70 years. But it's going to happen anyway, you know. And uh, I really, we were wondering, you know, what, what people going to study history you now, how they're going to study history. Yeah, that's, they what, that's, that's why I asked the question, because <laughs> yeah. is, is, is it now going to be 
the last 30 or 40 years going to be ignored by the oh, Russian people? I think, oh, they're not going to be ignored. They're going to be just um, reviewed, I'd say. Because I think the last two years they were changing uh, the um, books on history probably every month, you know. <laughs> I think the teachers were going crazy. And the, 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 yeah, the yeah, students what were what going, about the kids? So, kids were going crazy. So maybe the textbooks will stay in uh, style for more than a couple weeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the new record. We'll play it, and uh, uh, once again, thank you for coming down oh, again and bringing this pleasure. down. Oh. Uh, you, I'm big fans of yours. And, <laughs> thank, you. Uh, thank you, thank you. And uh, when you guys play in town, you'll let us know so we can Definitely. get the, get the right, word we will. out. All right. We will. Um, tell me about what we're going to hear. We're going to listen to Moscow Calling. Yeah, this song we wrote uh, actually uh, last year already. It was one of the first songs we wrote for our record and the story is behind this song you know when we were in russia you know and even when we were like in europe we used to call a lot to the united states and uh, almost every time when we were dialing we would hear like ta -ta 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 -ta. all the circuits are busy now please try and make a call later and uh sasha was calling like hundreds and hundreds times thousand times yeah yeah and what when he was in moscow he was listening to all this voice and i was very sweet female voice answering and he fell in love with the operator's voice so I'm this sorry. sounds so great i'm sorry <laughs> all circles are busy now please try a call later yeah yeah you phonomaniac you yeah. know the phonomaniac it's a words from this song so so, yeah. so sasha basically fell in love with, a, re love, with yeah. a recording with a recording yeah. well what am i gonna do we're, we're, we're gonna t we're gonna talk afterwards <laughs> about okay, this, right. this problem right. uh sasha um, <laughs> Okay, thanks again for coming down, guys. Let's play the record, yeah. and uh, thanks again. Oh, you, thank you. This is welcome. a world premiere on KNAC, Long Beach. Uh, yeah.
Pure Rock 105.5 KNAC. Brand new music from uh, Gorky Park. We got to talk, guys. Sasha has a real problem here, you know? <laughs> yeah. It really we does. Call a doctor. You know? Yeah, call a doctor. <laughs> oh, God. So, when is the record supposed to be out? Any uh, idea? I know we talked a little bit yeah, uh, off, off air about... Uh, about I would like to see this record tomorrow. You know, know, it seems to me it makes sense. It, it should be put out right now. Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. Just not everything happens so fast, you know. Sometimes things go slow. But we hope that uh, the the record will be out about Christmas, maybe, that time. Yeah. Just in time for the Christmas season. <laughs> you can pick it up and... Yeah. Uh, a stocking stuffer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Thanks again for coming in. Well. We're going to take a break and uh, be back with your calls. If you have anything on your mind this morning, give us a call. 437-KNAC-714-534-KNAC.